everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, my name is Rachel Lars. Today is going to be a bit more of a chatty video. We're just going to be talking about my story when it comes to fitness and weight loss. So it will be a video where I'm predominantly just sitting here talking with you. I will share some photos and I'm going to do a bit of a Q&A at the end. If you're not a fan of talking videos, I do have plenty of other shorter videos, but this one will be a little bit longer. So grab some snacks and settle in. Basically, I'm going to be explaining how I got from this picture to that picture. And in order to do that, I will have to give you a bit of a background story as well. And this may be a little bit all over the place because I haven't scripted anything. I just have some dot points for myself to go off. So I'm just going to round primary school into one sort of thing. This is grade one to grade seven. Um, obviously had no real big issues there, but I do remember when I did hit grade five, it wasn't a student, but it was in fact a teacher who commented on how much food I eat and that there was a lot of lunch for a little girl to be bringing to school and that really set off something. I remembered I started hating people seeing me eat. It made me really, really self-conscious and I would just go all day without eating and just eat in the afternoon and at night when I got home either to my house or my grandparents' place. Anyway, I started gaining, I wouldn't say a lot of weight, like I was just a bit chubby in school and I never really noticed at all. And when I became like 15, 16, 17, I went through a bit of a growth spurt and I'm pretty sure I'm about as tall now as I was then. So I'm about 5'8". And that was when I grew a lot. And I obviously slimmed out because I kind of went that way. I did also play netball a few times a week. And I wasn't exactly a big eater still. Like I was still doing that thing where I wasn't eating during the day. And I would just come home and eat at night. After I finished school, I went straight into university to study photographic art. And I was working as well, of course. Like I had a job when I was in high school as well. Um, but I was finding it really difficult to deal with like coming out of school and going into a completely new environment because when I was in school I would hardly ever show up. I still did all of my assignments, I did awesome on all my exams and I was really good at the academic stuff. I just hate the classroom environment and with university I found that as well. Like I hated turning up to tutorials and I hated going to lectures. I don't like being in the room full of people. Often you would spend like a whole day in a lab developing photos and then you're not eating all day and then you eat when you're done. Again, so bad habits. And I was also doing freelance photography as well. And with that, I was not eating at all during the photo shoots. Some of them would go on for hours. And then after I finished, I would eat crap. If any of you followed me on Tumblr back then, this was when I went through that hula hooping phase and I would often hula hoop at home because I noticed I had started putting on a fair bit of weight and it was prominently in my arms and my thighs and my hips sort of region. That's always where I gained my weight first. I was putting that on and I decided I wanted to do something and I thought hula hooping looked really fun and I really should get back into it because it is awesome. And I didn't realize it at the time, but that's just massive amounts of cardio that you're doing. I ended up losing maybe 10 kilos, I think, and I slimmed down a bit, but then I fell out of the habit of doing the hula hooping and stuff because I got busy again and I wasn't very good at scheduling and I wasn't very good at fitting things into my day. After I'd been doing the photography for a couple of years, I had still been putting on weight. Um, any photographers out there, you will totally know what I'm going through in that the shoots, you're super busy, you're thinking, you don't have any downtime most of the time and then you finish and you just eat and then you get home and you're sitting on the computer and you're editing or lying in bed on the computer and editing and you just eat again. It was something that I was doing sort of as, it was a really bad habit. I was eating while I was doing something else and that was making me take my mind off how much I was eating and I was focusing more on the other task and just stuffing my face. Then I decided I wanted to step into a more normal job to have a more regular income and so I took a job at a store and it was a retail sales job and they did expect you to be there quite early and you finished quite late and it was my first like full-time real job. Everything I'd had before that had been part-time or had been casual. I'd never had anything that was full-time 38 to 40 hours a week. And the people that I worked with weren't beacons of health either. And myself and a girl that I worked with, we found out that we lived quite close to each other and we were like, okay, well, let's figure out what we can do. And we decided that a couple of nights a week we would go down to the local gym. I had no idea what I was doing. Her boyfriend really had a good understanding of the machinery and the equipment and she also had a pretty good understanding. 
I was learning a little bit of her, but I still, I didn't understand the importance of technique and I didn't understand the importance of having a training program. I'd always start my session by going on the treadmill for like 20 minutes, which bores the hell out of me. And then I'd go into the female only weights room because I was terrified of sharing the gym floor with men for some reason. I was scared people were watching me and scared people would look at me and judge what I'm doing. So I'd go into the female only area and work out in there. Um, but I, I really had no idea what I was doing. On the days that I wasn't going to the gym, I was going for runs and I was flogging myself with the runs. Like I would run for 15 kilometers. Um, some days I even did 20 kilometers and it was so bad for my joints. I remember getting all this pain on my shins and under my kneecaps and I didn't realize the benefits of stretching, the benefits of foam rolling. And I was just flogging myself with runs and not having proper technique in the gym and not having the recovery. I wasn't seeing physio, I wasn't seeing chiro, none of that. I moved into the city because I changed jobs and the job that I moved to, it wasn't a call center and it was super close to the city. So I was like, I don't want to travel so far every day. So I moved somewhere a lot closer to work with a girl from work. Because I was so far away from the gym that I was a member of, it was one of those sort of one-off gyms. It didn't have a chain, it was just the one. So I wasn't going there anymore. I was kind of too scared to go down to my local gym and sign up because I, I don't know, I, I always thought people would judge me for what I was doing. The friend that I was living with, um, she naturally stays quite slim and all the time we would make dinner for each other and we would have pizza or we would cook each other dinner and we would drink a lot of wine. The job that we were in was a sales based job and it was pretty performance heavy. We had a lot of key performance indicators that we had to meet every single week and every single month. Um, for that, I guess how we coped with the stress was getting home and drinking. The amount of pressure that I put on myself in that job to be the best was immense and at the same time I started studying psychology and I hadn't studied for a while and I was a bit out of habit and so my way of coping with that I would drink and then I would write my assignment and the next day I would edit it and I just started packing on the weight really really quickly. It probably would have been within maybe a three month period that I went from a size 8 to almost a size 14 and that's Australian sizes so I'm not sure what that is overseas but I did gain a fair amount of weight. Don't get me wrong, I never hated my body. I never thought there was anything wrong with it. In fact, I thought I looked amazing. So it just goes to show that the way you feel about yourself and your confidence does not come from how you look. It absolutely, completely comes from in here. And the place that we were living, it was super close to so much entertainment and we used to love to get dressed up and go out and just have fun and that involved drinking usually. Now my housemate, let's just call her S for the sake of ease, we'll call her S. My housemate S and I, we went to a like a pool party with my friends because my friends every now and again, like on a public holiday or something, they all get together at someone's place and there's usually a pool and alcohol. Australia has such a big drinking culture, <laughs> if you aren't aware already. And I remember it sort of dawned on me, like most of my friends are naturally thin. And I was looking at myself and I was looking at them and I was like, it's not that I'm not thin as them because I always just figured that I was more curvy, but I felt so unwell. Like if you looked at me and then you looked at them, my skin wasn't so great, it was very dull, like my nails were brittle and breaking all the way down, I just felt sluggish and it didn't matter sort of what I did because I'd try and eat healthy for a little bit and then I'd fall off track and then I'd try again for a little bit and just fall off track and it wasn't working for me. So I realized I really needed to actually do something about it. I decided to cut down on the alcohol a little bit. I didn't do it enough, but I did a little bit. And then I was going for walks and runs all the time and I started meal prepping my food. Now, when I was meal prepping, I was probably only doing half the week and the other half I was still not eating very well and I was still leaving it the whole day and then just eating at night. S had a friend called Jay. Jay wanted to start personal training and she didn't have anyone to go with her and she got offered a free session by Bo. And so she said, oh, Rachel, I really want you to come with me. I'd feel better if I had someone with me. So I said yes and I turned up with her and we did like, I guess you'd call it fitness testing just to see where we were at. And I didn't realize how unfit I was until Bo put me through a brutal first training session. We decided to start training together with him so we could split the cost and that way we could both have a session once a week with Bo just to get some direction with our training. 
The next week we did our first proper training session with him and he absolutely flogged us and he took this after photo of me right after I'd finished training, didn't have makeup on, looked like a mess, but whatever. So after the first month of properly weight training, I'd lost 11 centimeters from my waist. I can't remember what I lost off everywhere else, but it was a decent amount and I'd lost a few kilos as well. I remember when Bo measured my waist and he said 11 centimeters, I thought he was joking. I'm like, okay, well, what is it really? He's like, no. 11 centimeters in one month and I was like what I remember one time during my training session I was really upset and I it must have been the third month into training or something like that where because my results were so fast at first I was so excited and I thought that was going to keep happening but then they slowed right down and he said to me this is a box you're in here at the moment you're training pretty regularly you're eating all right sometimes you're comfortable you're in your box you need to step right out of that if you want to achieve these goals. When Jay and I went in there and he talked about our goal setting with us, most of her goals were based on her looks and all of my goals I found were based on my performance. I wanted to be able to do certain things like run a certain distance and beat a certain time. That's how I set my goals. And so in order to achieve them, I had to work really hard. It was never a straight progress along the way. There'd be days that were good, days that were bad, days I'd want to binge eat and you know, all the trial and error that comes with it. At first, when I was seeing all those awesome results, I was having a low carb diet and my body runs really, really well like that, where I have higher fats in my diet and lower carbohydrates and I just focus them around training times. With other people, not so much, they wouldn't be able to do that, but that worked really well for me. And then I decided to try a diet that was higher in carbohydrates and I started putting weight back on. So this is when I started coming up with recipes, started looking at meal ideas, I enrolled in my nutrition course and I started the Eat, Run, Lift blog because I wanted to share what I was doing with other people. I found that the way that I was holding myself accountable was by posting things online because people would see me in real life and go, oh my gosh, you've lost so much weight. But it's happened to me so many times before where I lose the weight and then I put it back on and I lose the weight and then I put it back on and I was committed to actually make a change for myself this time and to find something that I was passionate about. So I think it's really important to have something that is holding you accountable and to remember that the progress doesn't just go straight forward. It kind of goes up and down and around a little bit. And I really had to learn to just trust the process. I knew I was eating good food, I knew I was exercising, and I knew eventually things would change. Even though I was training with Bo, I was only doing one session a week, then the girl that I was training with decided to stop training, and I kept going, and I went up to two sessions a week, and then I started to slowly see some more results. I didn't own, and in fact I still, we don't own any scales at home because I find it's better to track your progress through measuring tape and through DEXA scan and body fat percentage, that sort of thing. So we have scales at the gym of course because clients are there, so every now and again I'll weigh myself on that. But back when I was just training with Bo, it would be once a month we do weights and measurements. I found that that was really helping a lot because I remember when I was at home and when I was doing all that hula hooping and cardio exercise, I would weigh myself every day and I would get discouraged if it went up even a little bit. But your weight fluctuates so much and it can depend on how much water you've had or what time of the month it is. All of this sort of stuff can contribute to your weight. It doesn't mean your body fat percentage is changing though. Even a year ago, that anxious part of me was still terrified to go to the gym on my own. I had to go with Bo or with someone else just so that I wasn't on my own because I was so scared of people watching me. And then Bo started getting really busy, getting more and more clients and I couldn't go to the gym with him because we were seeing each other by this point. I couldn't go to the gym with him, so I just had to start going on my own. I had no other choice. If I wasn't going on my own, I wasn't going at all. And I remember thinking, this isn't the kind of thing that I can make someone else do for me. I have to do this on my own. I have to just go there. For me, it would help to just like wear a hat and pull it down and shove some headphones in or even just the headphones. Just something so you can zone out a little bit. The training style that Bo had me following is exactly the same as the Get Lean Mesomorph guide. So he turned it into an ebook and then he created the ones for Endomorph and the one for Ectomorph. And it's just trained for your body type. It is a gym guide though. So if you don't go to the gym, if you don't know how to go to the gym, it's not for you. Now my program has changed a little. So I am training up to six days a week with just a mixture of things. I absolutely love heavyweight training. I'm not, and I would never want to be a power lifter, but I really, really enjoy the process of trying to pick up heavy stuff. And then we mix that in with boxing and some MMA as well. The way that I'm training at the moment, I'm moving away from the Get Lean Guide. I was following that for a year and a half and it got me some awesome results, but now I feel like I've outgrown it. 
Bo is writing me a new training plan to follow and he said that the way I have to train is like a man. I love the changes that have happened to me through training and it's not the fact that it's just weight loss, it's not the fact that I've changed my body because as I was saying, I would look at myself and I thought I was totally fine, like there was nothing wrong with my body. But it's mentally how much I've changed, how much more clarity I have, how I'm able to just switch from one task to another. I know exactly what I'm doing all day, every day. Another huge change that I've seen in myself is confidence because I was always all right before, but now I am so confident in myself and what I have to offer the world. Now I'm just gonna answer some of these Q and A questions. And if I think of anything else, I will add it on. How did you keep motivating yourself throughout this journey? Love you, Rachel. I love you too, Rachel. I'm pretty sure your name is Rachel. All right, so with the motivation, I would often, now motivation is something that definitely comes and goes. It's great when you have it, but it can disappear really fast. I was finding that I'd be motivated for like two or three days and then I'd start to fall off track, little things would start creeping back. So what I found is you need constant motivation. I don't need it so much now because I'm more internally motivated now. I'm just like, I really want to exercise. Yes, let's go do it. But before I'd have to look at pictures, I'd have to read quotes, I'd have to look at other people's before and afters. That's what helped me stay motivated at first. How do you feel about detoxes? I'm really wanting to develop a healthier diet and looking to lose a little bit of weight before spring break. Thank you so much and I love your channel. Thank you. Okay, so it depends what kind of detox you're talking about. If it's a detox tea, if it's a detox, like a lemon detox thing, I would say no. Simply because your body's not getting the nutrients that it needs and of course you're going to lose a little weight, but that is totally temporary and you'll gain it all back. However, if it's a detox food plan, I'm pretty open to those because it's just pretty much putting you on whole foods and a healthier diet. And that's what's gonna help you see the weight loss. Um, the one that we have for Eat, Run, Lift, it's designed to help you stop craving sugar and craving saturated fats and that sort of thing. So it's a good way to reset what you're eating and get into the healthier habits afterwards. It's seven days long, our one. There are different detoxes available. Some go for two weeks, some go for a month. So I guess it depends what you're wanting to do. I like to use myself as a little bit of a guinea pig when it comes to this stuff. I've tried one of those slimming tea things and it did absolutely nothing for me. At the moment, I'm doing a liver flush with the herbs a naturopath told me about. Now, I'm doing this because I wanted to test it out. That's why my skin's breaking out a little bit because it's designed to just get everything out of you. Um, so basically, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know I'm estrogen dominant. That's why I store more fat in my arms compared to anything else. So my waist can be down as 60 centimeters, whereas my arms will still look quite big because that's where I retain fluid and where I retain fat. That's just my body. Everyone has a different area. I was doing more research into xenoestrogens and phytoestrogens, which are found in the environment around you and how they get into your system. And I also found out that because your liver is so busy processing those, that it has a hard time processing the estrogen that's already in your body, which can be causing the estrogen dominance. So I'm trying the liver flush just to see if it has any benefit. I feel really good on it already. I'm still eating on a lot of them if you're not meant to eat and you're just meant to drink juice. I wouldn't want to just be drinking juice because I'm still training and I need food. If you guys want me to do a video on it, let me know. I can't prescribe anything, of course, because I'm not qualified in that department, but I can definitely show you what I've been doing. How do I stop myself from craving food during that time of the month? That can be really, really tricky. I find personally for me, the thing that's helped the most is actually making sure I'm drinking enough water because I'm not sure why, but at that time I'll be drinking less water and I think I'm still having enough but I'm not, so I'm consciously trying to make sure I'm having enough water. I also make sure to remember that I'm taking my iron, zinc, and vitamin C supplements. Have you experienced judgment or cynicism from people in your life offline during your fitness journey? Thankfully, the people in my life offline have been super supportive because they've seen where I've come from to where I am now. And I think it's not just the physical change as well, but the mental change. And the people in my real physical life are always there to support me, which is awesome because I'll have people commenting my photos like, oh, this is photoshopped, you're so fake, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, actually, no, I saw her. Like, that's what she looked like yesterday. So it's cool that they're there for me and they're willing to back it up because they do see me on a regular basis and they know exactly what I look like. Online is definitely where I get the most judgment because if you're sitting at a wrong angle or if the camera's the wrong way and you get like a double chin, 
Um, people are quick to assume that you look nothing like your photos. People who haven't met you are also very quick to judge based on photographs and videos and things like that and they'll try to do everything that they can to prove to themselves that what you're doing is not real. So if you are going to be posting pictures online of your progress, just be warned that there are people like that and they'll try and do everything they can to tear you down and not believe it simply because they can't do it themselves. What was the hardest thing you found to do or cut out when you started your fitness journey? I found incorporating cardio is the hardest thing for me. Find some different cardio then. If you're getting bored of running or walking or rowing or whatever you're doing, find something else. You could do dance classes like I used to do. You could do hula hooping. There's so much cool stuff that you could do. I do boxing now. Uh, the hardest thing for me to cut out was alcohol because it was such a big socialization thing with me and my friends. So I just decided to pop in a few of those questions because a lot of them were quite similar and I did ask for those questions on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter below. I ask you guys a lot of stuff like what you'd like to see. Um, just some personal tips I guess from me. I would say take each day as it comes. You can't predict the future. You don't know what things are going to be like. So just deal with problems as you get to them. As much as possible, just try not to stress about your results. Just keep working on having better daily habits and in the end it will all add up. I know how stressful it can be, but try not to worry about it and try not to micromanage yourself. Start incorporating better habits into your daily practices and you will get there eventually. I have been working and studying and all of these things and I've managed to make the time. People always say, how do you find the time? And you don't find the time, you just make the time yourself. Whether that means you have to wake up a little bit earlier or whether you change the order that you're doing things, find some time. Everyone has a spare 10 minutes in their day where they can fit something in. I think I should also mention as well that there are still some days where I doubt myself and I doubt what I'm doing or I'm bloated or something happens where I don't feel super confident, but everyone has days like those and you just have to work through them. Losing weight and looking a certain way is not gonna make you instantly happy and love yourself if you don't already. That is definitely a mental game. I have two videos planned, one that I wanna do on motivation and one that I wanna do on confidence and loving yourself and just not caring what other people think. So if you'd like to see those videos as well, leave me a comment and let me know and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.